when President Ford uh, pardoned former President Nixon, of course, all of us who were in prison hoped we'd get out as well. We didn't. Uh, I'm now very happy because uh, as a result of being in prison, God has been able to use this in my life to touch the lives of countless hundreds of thousands of people. Had I gotten out of prison, I probably would not have had that opportunity. And so I'm glad. I'm a little bit like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who was in prison in the Soviet Union, and after 10 years wrote, bless you, prison, bless you for being in my life. There, lying on the rotting prison drawer, I came to realize that the object of life is not prosperity, as we are made to believe, but the maturing of the soul. I think the greatest sermon of the 20th century. And it's the story of my life. I'm grateful that I was there. Do you have any contact with President Nixon now? Any relationship well, with him? Yeah, I, I would get to see him uh, every six months or so after I got out of prison, and, and he was in exile. Now he's, uh, his public esteem is restored, and he's uh, well-respected, and so I haven't gone to see him quite as much because he hasn't needed me, but I see him periodically. New Zealanders could understand one or two bad apples in a barrel, but why do you think everything came together at that time to have so much corruption throughout one administration, do you think? Well, I think once the house of cards begins to cave in, it's going to happen virtually to anyone in that same situation. It was a conspiracy. And once they decided to break, break it open, uh, first of all, the, as many of the prosecutors wrote, they were trying to get to Nixon, and the way you did that was one by one to take his aides. And so there were 25 of us, ultimately, who went to prison. But most of the effort was to get at Mr. Nixon, and in a conspiracy case, everybody who's got a, even a tangential involvement ends up being, being in it. Do you think you would have found Jesus Christ without Watergate? Was it in you anyway, <laughs> latent? Well, I think so, because I left the White House uh, before Watergate. And I was going back to my law practice, and I had uh, everything a person could want in life. I was 41 years old. I had a six-figure income, a yacht in the harbor. I had limousines. I had clients waiting for me, and I felt absolutely miserable inside. And it was then that I met a businessman who had been a very close friend of mine. I'd worked with him for years. I had not seen him in the four years I'd been in the White House. And he told me that he had accepted Jesus Christ. Uh, it shocked me. I had never heard those words. But I watched him over a period of months, and he was so different that one evening I went back and spent an evening at his home, and, and that's when I felt the power of God touching my life, and that was 13 years ago. I surrendered my life to Christ. The uh, newspapers of the world here in New Zealand and around the world uh, had the incredulous headlines, a White House tough guy turns to God, and the cartoonists uh, had a field day. But uh, I can tell you 13 years later, it, I'm more certain today of my faith than I was then and grow deeper in it each day. You say in your book that, that even your son Wendell uh, <laughs> yeah. said, oh, no, Dad's a Jesus freak. That's right. So, <laughs> it's a little um, hard in your own family. How my, do you uh, cope when the skeptics reach your own family? Well, I don't blame them for being skeptical. Frankly, if the tables have been turned and I was watching somebody who'd been in the White House uh, high in political office and he goes to prison and... Uh, announces he's born again, I would say, ha, there's somebody looking for sympathy. So I don't, I'm not a bit surprised when people are skeptical, and I've learned to accept that. And uh, if, in, in a way, it's good, because, you know, my conversion was so publicized that many people look and they say, he's got to have some sort of a scam, a con, a, got to be some sort of an angle. It's now been 13 years, and I've been working 10 years in the prison, giving away book royalties and speaking fees, and devoting myself to this ministry. So people, after 13 years, have got to begin to say, well, either he's for real and Christ is real or he's crazy. And you kind of have to take your choice because I think after this number of years, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really encountering skepticism. I think it, it, it may be God's used it to convict other people in their lives. Well, you spent about a year in prison yourself. Was it about Seven a year in, in Alabama? What, yes, I was, was in two prisons. Like? Well, I was in a minimum security prison, which is a little bit like some of your prisons here in New Zealand that I have visited. Uh, open dormitories, 50 men jammed together. I think the thing about prison, uh, the stale odors and the open urinals, the, the violence, the men getting up and down, banging their lockers at night, the fights, the uh, flashlights coming around, the guards shining them in your eyes. But the physical part I learned to live with, it's amazing what you can adapt to. What I never could get used to was the, uh, the men lying on their bunks staring into the emptiness, nothing to do, no place to go, nobody, nobody caring for them. And uh, that's the awful part of prison. It's the spiritual desolation. And crime is really a spiritual problem. That's why prisons aren't working. That's why they don't change people. It's really a moral problem. And the only thing that's going to work is something in the person's heart. And that's what I saw in prison. As bad as that place was, I can be glad for it now because I saw how God works where man's ways fail. 
knowing who you were, did they pick on you? Did they say, aha? Yeah, a little bit. When I first got to prison, of course, because uh, here was the former counsel of the President of the United States. I did the office next to the President, and so all of a sudden I'm in prison. And half the guys in there thought I'd put him in prison, and they may have been right. And I used to write a lot of Mr. Nixon's law and order speeches. So. Uh, but I got tested, and uh, uh, after about three or four weeks, one of the inmates came up to me and said, okay, Colson, we've decided you're all right. And from then on, I had no more problems. All right, tell me now about the work of the fellowship, what you do. Well, in every country, it's a little bit different. Uh, here in New Zealand, there's a lot of emphasis on aftercare. Uh, we have an excellent board here and uh, good groups of volunteers in Auckland and uh, Palmerston, North Palmerston, uh, Wellington, Christchurch. Uh, it's hundreds of volunteers going into the prison. Uh, I went in one night uh, during my visit here and had about 100 volunteers. It was wonderful. Uh, counseling these lads, uh, trying to help them as they get out of prison, uh, finding a, uh, a church home, finding some people that will take an interest in them. and and to get them back on their feet. First of all, introducing them to Christ, because I'm convinced nothing is going to work if you don't do something to change that person's heart. And then helping them get on their feet when they get out of prison. And we do that in a variety of ways. In the States, we do a lot of work programs. We take inmates out of prison. They work in the middle of their sentence. They actually, uh, this past summer, former President Jimmy Carter and I built homes with a group of convicts out of prison uh, for poor people in the inner city of Chicago. We do a lot of work programs like that, and I hope we'll be able to start some of those here in New Zealand. But I'm very excited about the ministry here. It's gotten off to a wonderful start. Nevin McEwen is doing a bang-up job. What sort of, can you, can you judge success in percentage, how many you reach and how many stay out of prison once well, they come out? Well, Mother Teresa says that Christianity is an anti-statistical proposition, that uh, we're in it because we need to be faithful to God's call, whether we see any results or not. But there was a survey done in the United States, yes. The recidivism rate there is 75%. Three quarters of the people who get out of prison commit another crime and go right back in. Your statistics are similar here in New Zealand. Uh, the U.S. Parole Commission did a study of those inmates going through our programs and found a 95% success rate. We also have a model program going on in Florida right now where inmates come out and they work. And we're finding there that 87% do not uh, reoffend. So it works, yeah. It's the only thing that does. Uh, prisons don't. This does. So I was wondering if there was an element that only responded to you because they are a captive audience, <laughs> no pun intended, and they think that's what you want to hear, want them to do. We, uh, we, that's called jailhouse conversions. And uh, we run into about the same number of uh, false conversions in prison you do in your typical church on a Sunday morning. Uh, people come to church for all sorts of reasons. People come out and do a prison chapel for all sorts of reasons. Actually, it's a little tougher to be a Christian in a prison than it is out on the street, because you take a lot of abuse. Uh, uh, one inmate I talked to this week, he had his Bible burned and his cell burned. Uh, the inmates look upon that sometimes as a sign of weakness. It isn't. It's tough to be a Christian in prison, and it takes courage to do it. Finally, Chuck, do you have any ambition, however faint, to return to a political career? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> I, That's it. It's I, all over. I have done my time, literally and figuratively, and I wouldn't trade the rewards of what I'm doing now are so great, uh, contrasted with any of the satisfaction I ever had in politics, that uh, no, walking off of Air Force One uh, with the band playing and Hail to the Chief and people saluting uh, is absolutely nothing compared to the joy of seeing God working in the lives of people who are in need in prisons. Chuck Colson, thank you for joining us on Sunday's Thank Weekend. you, Lord. Good to be with you.